Hey everybody, this is Stratagem, and today we're going to talk about Beastars Season 1 Episode 2, The Academy's Top Dogs. So, you remember the cliffhanger ending from last episode? Well, we're just going to ignore it for now, and instead start with Legoshi being rudely awoken, leaving us in the dark about Hell's fate. We do get to see Legoshi's roommates though, most importantly, Jack the dog, who seems to be his best friend. Or at least he knows Legoshi's moods and is able to read him quite well. Also, there's this really tiny dog. Look at him. He's tiny. Anyways, time for the intro. It's a fancy stop motion thing. Have a look. And yeah, this is the first time we get to see the opening credits. The first episode didn't have any. And now we're suddenly back to the end of episode 1, and the beginning of episode 1 as well, uh, with Legoshi embracing Hell. I have to say, for all the talk about him attacking her, this pose does not exactly appear to be overly aggressive. It's almost as if he's trying to protect her. From what though? Possibly himself and his desires. No, not those desires. Well, maybe a little. This is actually an interesting look into Legoshi's character. He's torn between his amicable personality and desire to protect herbivores and his more animalistic base needs as a carnivore. Anyhow, so this is how things went down last night. Legoshi fighting with himself, only to be stopped from harming Hell by his drama club teammates, who need his help when Lewis broke his leg trying to help the goat guy falling off the stage. Well, talk about timing. Alright, back to the present, where we learn the most horrifying fact about the show's universe. Students of Cheriton Academy have to eat three meals a day, and there's neither meat nor dairy to be had. If that fact isn't proof positive that the show takes place in Hell, then I don't know what is. Kidding aside, thank you kind exposition fairy for this information. During breakfast then, a fight breaks out between two carnivores at the cafeteria, and when biting occurs, Legoshi, reminded of his own loss of control last night, tries to break the situation up. And we get to see another one of Legoshi's quirks. Despite being noticeably bigger and stronger than the fox, he shies away from physical confrontation, even thinking about losing on purpose, just so he wouldn't appear to be dangerous. He is quite clearly at odds with what he is, a wolf, and overly conscious about how he is perceived by others. Luckily for him though, Lewis comes in to defuse the situation. So both of our male leads have saved the other one once now. I guess that means they're even. Oh no, the exposition fairy's back at it again. Well, half time, off we go to the drama club rehearsal. Lewis, despite his injury, is still playing the Shinigami Adler, lead role of the play. Say what you will, he's taking his drama club acting serious. Very overly serious. I mean, actual fighting on stage? My dude, that is not how acting works. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the scariest character in the show, Bluebird Guy. He wants roses for decoration, and when he wants something, you better make sure he gets it, lest he haunts your dreams for all eternity. Seriously, why is his design so creepy? Anyhow, Legoshi is off to get roses from the gardening club, and who would be the only member of the club? Uh, that's right, Hell. Of course. So they finally get to meet properly, face to face. As you can see, Legoshi is thrilled. But his plan to flee is thwarted by the Anteater Kibi. So, how will Hell react? Well, apparently not at all. She claims to have no idea what happened last night, though it is not clear if she is telling the truth. Still, she is pretty friendly and seems to have no problems with Legoshi being around, who is clearly overwhelmed with the situation. But before he has the chance to make things weird, Hell takes the initiative to weird us all out. It would seem that her bad reputation amongst the other girls is not entirely unfounded. Misunderstanding Legoshi's awkward fumbling, she thinks he's here for some horizontal tango. And she does seem up to it. Now I gotta say, I love how ridiculous this scene is. Hell's talking about taking Legoshi to the bone zone and starts getting undressed, while he is so preoccupied with what to say in response to her earlier invitation to lunch at the cafeteria, that he doesn't even notice anything until she's standing in front of him in her underwear. Good job, Legoshi. And this is where the episode ends. Cliffhanger much? Well, considering that the show is rated ages 16 and up, and Legoshi is only 17, it is fair to assume that there won't be any interspecies fun time in the near future. Huh, we learned quite a lot in this episode, didn't we? We got to see what ultimately happened after Legoshi's attack on Hell, and we witnessed their first proper face-to-face -face meeting. The conflict between Legoshi's gentle character and his aggressive wolf nature is brought up, as is Lewis's obsessive determination and devotion to things. And Hell, well, there are definitely things going on with her. 
Seeds are planted in the viewer's mind, leaving us wondering what her deal is. Well, good job intriguing the audience. Though I do have to knock the episode down a bit for the clumsy, tell, don't show world building in the beginning. Still, another solid 7 out of 10 from me. And that's it for this episode. If you did like the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content. If you agree or disagree or have anything else to say, there is also a comment section here on YouTube, which you can use to leave a comment with your thoughts about the episode. And finally, I also have a Twitter and a Patreon where you can follow me for updates and support the channel. Speaking of support, huge thanks to my patrons, especially my top tier patron, Nocturnal Vision. And thus, we're done. So, as always, I have been Stratagem, thanks for watching, and see you next time!